<laughs> What's up, y'all? This is Lenny S. VP, Rockefeller, Def Jam, A&R's uh, most prestigious, most best dressed A&R in the business. Now let me stop. I'm here with my man Gemini Keys. I'm here on Rock Me TV. I'm here at the round table. I'm here doing everything possible, and I only do it on one site, on one most frequented site that I go to, that I stay on, is rockmetv.com. And we only have one model on Rock Me TV. Do not shrink that screen. <laughs> and I'm back, it's your boy Keys Digital with the Vice President of A&R Def Jam. Always on his job, even sorry. in the interview. You think I could get this one on now, but... Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> All right. Now, Lenny, um, you're at a point in your career right now where you could tell an artist, uh, that's not gonna work, brother. Did you ever feel that way with Jay-Z? Nah, nah. The Jay-Z funny story, I try to keep this as good as possible because uh, Jeff McKinney, man, is on me. That's all, you got another one. Let me talk I used to see Jay in the street, meaning at shows, at, um, when he was on his come up. Mm -hmm. Big Daddy Kane would do shows, uh, he would come out with Kane. So, um, you know, I, there was no internet, but mixtapes were still out, um, sampler tapes were out. I was just on, I was on the underground scene heavy. So I used to notice him and be like, wow, that guy is ill. You know what I mean? This is early, this is 95, early 95, 94, 95, 95 probably. You're talking about like around Reasonable Doubt, right? No, before that. Reasonable Doubt is 96. Oh yeah, okay, that's right. This is 94, right. 90, this is 94 going into 95. So he's doing little appearances, you know what I mean? He's not He's not even the rapper, he's not even, I don't even think he's trying to really rap, rap, rap. But you know, he was down with Jazzo and they, I guess they thought he was nice and they was pulling him in. This is when Clark Kent, they're trying to pull him in, like you should rap, he was doing stuff with Kane. So whatever, fast forward, always watched it, always um, paid attention. And I was the street team, so he would be at events and like, you know, this he's Jay Z. This is they living the life, like for real. Him, his crew, they in the corner, they popping bottles. This is early on. I'm doing stuff and I used to tell him, I used to be like, yo, I'm gonna do this for you one day. Like I'm gonna be pushing your shit. And you know, he knew me so it wasn't like, yo, get out of my face, but it was like, whatever, money, you know what I'm saying? Like, go ahead, you know what I'm saying? So then I got the bad boy gig. Bad boy was my first legitimate paying promotional job. This is ninety five going to ninety six. So this is when Biggie and Craig Mack were dropping their albums. Okay. Right? Rockefeller started in ninety six. So um I followed, I followed, I followed. People that thought, thought I was crazy for this. It's ninety six. Um Big and Puffy and Craig Mack, they're at the top of the world. They dropped the album, they got the Big Mac campaign. I promoted the Big Mac campaign. Mm -hmm. It was a no I'm saying I didn't do it. I'm saying I promoted oh, okay, the okay. street team. Like, no, because I remember that. We were on fire. We were on fire. Yeah, fight, yeah, fight, I remember right? that. Rockefeller just started. They had got a deal with uh, Priority Records and they were opening up an office and it was like fresh, 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 fresh start. I had just got my bad boy jacket. Feeling great. You know what I mean? Bad boy said, they just called me Leno. Uh, Super Mario is the guy that started me in the business. Pick up the Super Mario. Oh, he just called me Leno. So it wasn't Lenny S. It said Leno on the joint. And I heard the office started. My man Ray Ray worked at Penalty Records. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep it rolling, but I'm gonna mm -hmm. tell you real quick. My man Ray Ray was at Penalty Records, and we had an account with Ray Ray because we were doing street promotion. I went to go pick up some uh, uh, product from Ray Ray, and they said Ray Ray quit. And I'm like, what you mean? Like, what do you mean he quit? It's like he went to go start some company, Rockefeller. So I was like, oh yes, this is my shot. Mm -hmm. Went over, found him, and set us up for an interview. It was only four people in the office, five. Christy Clifford, which is a great manager. She manages Kid Capri. Uh, talent, uh, Idris Alba, incredible. Uh, Dane, Jay, Biggs, and Ray Ray. And I think hip hop, hip hop was still in high school. Only people in the office. Told them what we did. Jay knew us. Dane knew us from the street. It was me and my man Bert. Knew us from the promotion side. And Ray was like, these are my guys. They be in the street. They heavy. I want them to do it for us. And Jay was like, get them out of here. They bad boys. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. Like, cause he knew that. But that's how hard we went. Right. But I was offended, cause I'm like, yo, shit. I'm trying to do this for him. I went. Gave him my jacket, told Super Mario, I can't do this. I'm rolling with this Rockefeller shit, and I gotta prove to them that. And they was like, what? Like, remember, Jay's nobody at the time. They're like, you're gonna leave the notorious B.I.G. and Bad Boy to go to, so, you know what I mean, like that? And I was like, did it. Almost got in a fight with somebody that day, they was like, you a sucker, da 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 I did it, that's how much I believed in Jay. I believed that Jay was gonna be the biggest rap in the world. Swear to God, hands down, no lie. Anybody who knows me knows that story from Bad Boy, from anywhere, Superman, a bunch of guys that was there, Harv, Pierre, uh, June Balloon, all those guys. Anyway, I left, I went, and the, the, the most frustrating part even after that 
was member Jaden Pop to his third album. So for three years, I still fought people. I still had to, we had to, we had to struggle. I still had to deal with my moms and my whole family. What are you doing? Like, they didn't even know rap. And on top of that, they didn't know rap who wasn't popular. So it wasn't like I was with, you know, a popular person. They could be like, oh, he works with. So they hated it. My mother would give me applications for the transit and be like, no, serious. Like there was, no, seriously, seriously. And it wasn't until we dropped Hard Knock Life, right? Hard Knock Life dropped and it became the biggest hit in the world. Sold six million copies, I think eight million, nine million worldwide, six million in the States. And it became the pinnacle of Jay's career, the start of him being the person that we all knew he was. And I remember the day Hard Knock Life dropped, we all used to be on the road. Jay was on, he did 324,000 the first week, I remember clearly. Mm-hmm. And we went and met him in Virginia. And he was in a radio station at the top. And, the, um, and it was a glass window. And me and, he got there before us. And me and Tata, all the rest of us, I got there later, got out the van. And this is the first time we had seen him. And I still get like choked up, seriously, when I say, and we looked it up at him and he looked down at us and it was like, we did it. And we just did this like, Three, three hundred thousand a month week is a hard knock. And that, because that was just like, for us it meant a lot, but it just was also our validation to the world that this guy is the guy we're telling you about. This is the guy that's going to break boundaries and become the most biggest and iconic superstar in the world. Wow, that's so, a great story. And then, wow. and then just to sum it all up, to end it, that's when my family and everybody was like, it went from he's ruining his life to my son works with Jay Z. <laughs> no, for real. And that, and that, that to this day, you know what I mean? Like she keeps every clip I've done, every clip Jay that like that meant more than anything to me because it's like finally getting accept, accepted to you know do something that that made them proud. You're definitely the fly on the wall because you got to see the progression of Jay Z the artist to mm-hmm. Jay Z the executive. Mm-hmm. So give me a little, you know, already we know the artist part. What's it like seeing seeing that progression? Oh, uh, great! He's actually the same guy. You know what I mean? Um, he's actually more vocal as a rapper. Like the way you guys know him, he's more vocal because you know he, he spits out a lot as far as in the songs, and he's he's got that swagger there. And he's spitting his shit out. So um, behind the doors, you know, Jay's good, quiet, funny, very intelligent guy. Not to say he's not vocal, but I mean, you know, he's not the guy where you, if you really pay attention, he doesn't do. Um, uh, let's say award shows, announcements, or, uh, you know, giving out awards. Like, you know, he's, he's only there if he accepts. He's not really there to, you know, give out awards. Like, you know, a lot of artists go up and be like, the best right. winner, he doesn't do that kind of, you know, he's not that kind of vocal guy, you know what I mean? Like, but around family and friends, absolutely. And just on the executive side, you know, makes the right decisions. Uh, he knows what he's doing, obviously, with his own career. So of course he knows what he's doing in the hands of the other, the hands of what, you know, uh, careers of other people in his hands. And um, it's just an honor just to watch him do it and, and, and see the decisions he make. And you know, even the mistakes that we've made, even at Rockefeller, it's a lot of positive and a little negative. But it's all a learning, you know. People grow and then they, people grow apart. And it was all a learning experience. I wouldn't change right. a thing. So you've definitely been around for the good times and you're definitely around for the greater times. Lenny, you're the voice of reason for the hottest show on the internet right now on rockmetv.com, The Roundtable. Shout out to Maya, to B, and Lenny. Lenny, yes, I'm big light. I'm here with Lenny, yes, right now. Mm-hmm. How did that whole thing come about? Because you're the, you're, the de- you know, you're the head of Def Jam VP, but you got time to see something like Rock Me TV and say, you know what, this is going to be major. And it is. Every Wednesday... We get a million plus views and more. It's nonstop. I heard. So talk, <laughs> so talk to you about how that all came about. From the old show we did, we just came back and um, you know, I found Maya and I got light together and I had a talk with them. I was like, I think we should do this. And then um, the stuff, Gemini Keys, Urkel, and you know, Phil uh, listened to our show and watched what was going on and you know, took a liking to it. And then with the grace of you guys helping us out, we did this together, had a meeting and. It started out really weird and, you know, like, oh, because we had never been taped before and it mm-hmm. felt so weird. We did the other show with ease and I think it's been great. It's been a few months. I think we broke boundaries already and, we, right. and I think it's only going to get better. You know what I mean? Spilago on rockmetv.com. We got a bunch of clips from the, from the last couple of shows. Trust me, you definitely want to log in and see what's going on. It's definitely exciting.